So earlier this year, a CIA agent thought he was being robbed in Pakistan, and he killed the two Pakistanis, Pakistan, an agent named Davis, right? Mm -hmm. So then the Pakistanis hold him for the better part of more than a month, um, and the, the ISI, right? That's the Pakistani mm -hmm. Secret Service. Uh, and that has caused the, guy, the, the, the lead general in Pakistan to order a bunch of Americans out, a significant number. Right, something like thirty percent of Americans out. We don't know exactly how many that means, but it's because uh, <laughs> we don't even know how many people. Nobody we have will there. say, but it's a significant. All contractors out, and it's apparently caused a significant riff in the relationship between Pakistan and the U.S. They want us to stop the drone attacks. They have no control over the drone attacks. Uh, we, we're doing that exclusively. Well, I mean, they they send the targeting information for the drone attacks. Apparently, no. They, that now this is apparently totally our purview. Now. Oh, this they, week? Now it is, they're, they're out of the drone business. <laughs> um, they, they, say, say, they say. Publicly. Right. Yeah. But the head of the ISI is, was here now this week. And I'm curious whether, uh, whether, that, whether that meeting with uh, Leon Panetta and, and some other. And, Mike and Mullen, probably. Also meeting with the State Department. And I'm curious whether sort of like this sort of public riff is going on, but whether sort of the head of the Pakistani ISI is saying, this is, we have to do this publicly to take a stand Who against knows, the Americans. Man? Who, they're fucking, they're all pathological liars. Who knows? You, by the way, meeting them and us. Yeah. I yeah, think we should just get the fuck out of all those places. Well, clearly. But the, the, the other thing is there's a history here, which is that the CIA has supported India throughout the whole Kashmiri conflict. And uh, to the point where they sort of see that there's no hope for Pakistan with Kashmir. So the, the history behind that is, is a sort of a, a you know, a, pre, a prejudice, a, a, a distaste for American intelligence in the first place because of what their position was. So that's an enduring problem that actually wasn't in this article, but it's an enduring problem within Pakistan as it, as it comes to uh, the U.S. And then also last week there was this report saying that the, the, the Pakistani army has done a terrible job at what they've been you know, charged with doing in terms of fighting the people that were over there fighting. So There's a great line in here, that, a great paragraph in here that just, we all know how complicated this is, as you're uh, pointing out. At the time of his arrest, it says here, Mr. Davis was involved in a covert CIA effort to penetrate one militant group called Lashkar-e-Taiba, which has ties to Pakistan's military and intelligence establishment and has made deepening inroads in Afghanistan and is perceived as a global threat. So you got this sort of rift, some extent of a rift between the, uh, between the Pakistani military mm -hmm. and ISI, and a rift between... Kind of, it's, it's like... But also, let me just make real quick, and then one between us and Pakistan. And then you have run, us running this covert operation to penetrate this group, which has ties to the Pakistani military and the intelligence service, and we and we're trying to penetrate it and work with the like. How is this remotely solvable? No, dude. We should just leave. Leave. Why are we paying them any money? Why are we even over there now? Let them just do whatever they're going to do. I mean, for the Pakistanis, they think, okay, let's say the Americans leave Afghanistan. What do we do? We want. We don't want India in Afghanistan, and we've got these militants who are willing to go over and you know do what we want. For Afghanistan, and at the same time, we kind of need those militants will, will they, to will keep those harassing militants, the Indians. And, and but will those there. will those militants still be willing to do whatever we want? I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. we should be asking the same question of a lot of our allies in the Middle East. No, but you're saying you're saying it as a reason, and and I don't disagree no, yeah, with you. But it's I mean, the same but, but, but it's, it's also it's the same kind of argument people in the Pentagon have, where they're like, "Hey, let's ship more guns and money to the know, Pakistani military," and nobody asks, "Will they do what we want?" The Pakistani uh, military thinks that what we have is our designs to take control, obviously, of Pakistan's uh, nuclear arsenal, which is about to be the fifth largest in the world. I, I presume that. I don't know. I would like to see Pakistan's How? nuclear arsenal disappear. Yeah, I don't fucking trust them. Right, but then we can't leave if that's right. our goal. Well, that's I mean, if we, but no, we can leave. Why don't we just get out of there and then nobody has a reason to use nukes on each other? We, um, uh, <laughs> uh, How much... Military assistance do we give each year to the Pakistani military? It's a my guess off the top of my head, five billion. We give one billion a year in American assistance to the Pakistani military. That is yeah. one quarter. I didn't quarter. get the chance to guess. Can How much know? do we give? Uh, you said five billion. I said five. Uh, uh, one billion. You're on it. It's exactly. Yeah. It's more, it's it shows you billion. what I know. It shows you what I know. Strong. We give just to give you an idea of how little that is. In fact, we give four billion dollars a year in tax breaks to big oil. 
and Exxon made $31 billion last year, and we give $4 billion of tax breaks to big oil. Uh, for crying out loud, if we're going to do this in Afghanistan, uh, give them $10 billion a year. Take those tax breaks and give it there if that's a priority, because we have no business giving $4 billion a year to big oil. I mean, our priorities make no sense. Maybe we should be out. I think this is a little longer topic than we have for the four minutes you wanted to make these clips. My, my talk is our priorities make no sense. None. Like they this haven't. Is, they haven't for like 20 years. I know. But this is, if, if you believe in this, this is sort of the safety of our children. And we're given one-fourth of that. Yeah. We're given, one, we're given four times that as tax incentives to the most successful, richest companies in America. Well, it's, it's, that's the thing. It's and not, it's more than it's 20 years about the safety of our children. It's more than 20 years when it comes to oil and big oil. If you believe, I was saying, years. if you believe in it, it's about the safety of it's, our children. It's about selling American weapons and giving them the money to buy American weapons. It's like, how fucking pathetic was it when Obama went to India and all he had to offer trade-wise was weapons? It's fucking sad. That's all we have left now is pushing guns. Well, and, you know, taking people's oil.